It's quite unsettling actually, being in this space. It's not an easy find. As you can see, it's behind a quite a large tree. I'm right here at the Undercliff Cemetery in Bradford. And just around this area, we have the resting place of the Lum family. Now, 4th of February, 1871, they were struck by a family tragedy under very unusual circumstances. Now, towards the end of this video, we shall take you to the actual grave site and pay our respects. But for now, I'm gonna meet uh, Mark at Little Horton where the story begins and it will bring some context to the actual tragedy. So we're currently outside number 24, Little Horton Green. And back in 1871, a family lived here, the Lum family. The head of the family was a man called Jabez. He was married to a woman called Martha and they had six children. And one of Jabez's jobs was to ensure that the All Saints Church and also its adjoining school were kept warm. And back in those days, you didn't keep buildings warm by turning on a thermostat, it was by furnaces. You had to basically go and light a fire. So I'd like to take the viewers back to the evening of Saturday, the 4th of February, 1871. It was a foggy evening and sadly, Jabez was not able to fulfill his work obligations to heat the church because he'd actually been confined to his bed for the past two weeks with a severe case of bronchitis. Now, when Jabez wasn't able to do that job, he'd actually send his eldest son, James, who was 15, to do it for him. So, at four o'clock on the Saturday afternoon, James went into the church, lit the furnace, and then he went to visit a friend up on Home Top Lane. About half past seven on that evening, James still hadn't come back home. So Martha, the children's mother, she sent the second eldest son, Charles, who was uh, 13, to make sure that the fire was still burning, to check on the fire. So Charles went to the church and he took with him two of his younger brothers. There was John, who was eight, and there was Fred, who was only five. So the three brothers came to the school, first of all, to check on the heating here. Everything was fine, and then it was from here they made their fateful journey to the church, which is just behind the school. So behind me is the All Saints Church in Little Horton. It opened in 1864. It took about two and a half years to build. Quite a splendid piece of architecture for Bradford. Marx, I read somewhere that this was going to be the replacement for the Bradford Cathedral, is that correct? Yeah, I've, um, I've read that too. Yeah, it was once considered to be a, an alternative place of worship. Obviously that never happened, but a marvellous building nonetheless. But it was here where the tragedy of the 4th of February 1871, where that took place. So we're inside the church, and I've never actually been in this church before, but what an absolutely beautiful building. Incredible. Anyway, if you have a look down here at the floor, you'll notice there's grills. Now, there wasn't radiators in the church back in 1871. This church would have been heated via these grills. The hot air will have come up and warmed the congregation. So what we'll do now is we're going to have a look at the place where the heat aspect of it was sourced. So the furnaces to heat the church, they were based in a vault beneath the vestry. And we're now gonna have a little look in that area. Well, here we are. We're in a vault beneath the vestry of the church. It's quite unsettling actually been in this space, bearing in mind the story I'm about to share. Um, this part, of this end part, this is where two furnaces were housed. And I believe we can actually see one of them. Looks like that's been blocked up with concrete at the far end, but The flue, I believe that's the technical term for it. I'm sure there might be a viewer or two that could uh, contradict me on that one. I'm not too uh, technical when it comes to old heating, but that's where the flue would have been. 
Is that coal? Yeah, looks like it. Yeah. So that's one. But then on the opposite side, because I understand there was one on the right-hand side of the room and one on the left-hand side of the room. And it makes sense that it would have been perhaps there, but there has been, you know, a huge degree of modernisation. Now, that doesn't look particularly modern, but, you know, we could be looking at early 20th century there. That could have been reconfigured. But I think that's where the other furnace would have been. So at about half past seven on Saturday the 4th of February 1871, the three brothers came into this vault. Um, they have come in through the door that I entered. Now originally there was actually ten steps from the ground level down to this basement level. That's since been replaced with um, a sloping pathway. But they'll have come in here and they'll have checked to see if both of the fires were burning. What happened next is a little bit of a mystery, but what we do know is that the three brothers were overcome and suffocated by a sulphurous fume that was in this very space. About an hour had passed and the mother, Martha, she'd become quite concerned about the fact that the children hadn't returned home. So she left the house and she went out looking for them. She went to the school first and she found that they weren't there. And then she came here only to find that the door was shut. So she went to Home Top Lane where her eldest son James was and she let him know that the children were missing and could he go and look for them. So he made his own search and he came to the church and he found that the door was indeed shut. So James came down to the church, he came to this door, and like his mother, he found it shut. So he tried the door and it opened, but it only opened part of the way, and there was something lodged behind it, he couldn't open it fully. So he pushed his way in and he had a look behind, and blocking the door, he found the body of his brother. The newspaper accounts say that he actually took his brother's body over to where the furnaces were, because it was quite dark in here and it was projecting some light. There was two furnaces, but one of them had gone out and it was that one that was producing the sulphurous smell. Um, he held his brother up to the light of the furnace that was still burning and he knew that his brother had died. And then with the light of the furnace, he looked around and he could actually see the bodies of his other two brothers. He ran from this vault, obviously upset, and he'd actually thought that his brothers had been murdered and he went to get his mother. In the inquest it was established that there was indeed two um, furnaces within this space, one on the right hand side of the room, one on the left hand side of the room. I'd say that this is the one on the right hand side and it was actually this very furnace that was the cause of the children's deaths. This is the original door and I know that because in the news reports from 1871, there's a reference to five ventilation portals. So at the time of the accident, if there was anything in here that was occurring that was likely to suffocate somebody or cause them difficulty with their breathing, this was the only form of ventilation. So after James went for his mother, obviously there was... Um, a huge amount of panic and, and distress. And James and some neighbours, they removed the bodies of the children and actually carried them across the road in the direction of what was the workhouse, which is now St Luke's Hospital. Behind me, you can see the Persian restaurant that's in Little Horton. Well, this used to be the old Red Lion pub. And on the evening of Monday, the 6th of February, 1871, it was in that pub building where the inquest was held. The inquest was conducted by Mr Bairstow. He was the deputy coroner. And these are basically the findings of the inquest. The following verdict. That the deceased came by their deaths from accidental suffocation by foul air and gases in the firing up place at All Saints Church. They recommended that the present door should be replaced by an open iron gate 
and that an area window should be made on the opposite side to the firing up place to disperse any gas which might arise. The following month, on March the 17th, there was actually, we'd call it a benefit concert now, but there was a concert put on in the school building. And that was for the benefit of the widow and her remaining children. But what we shall do now is we shall leave Little Horton and we shall go to the final resting place of those tragic children. So we've just arrived at the Undercliff Cemetery to look at the uh, grave site of the Lum family. And the weather has turned slightly snowing. So quick shout out to uh, Tim Hardy and Chris Lawson from the Undercliff Cemetery, volunteers who have helped me to locate the, uh, the family grave. So it's up here and Mark's already made his way. This one was not an easy find. As you can see, it's behind a quite a large tree. Lots of yeah, lots dead of, trees and Lord knows what, but yeah. here it is. The final resting place of the three Lum brothers. Charles, John and Fred. And there's also another name on this tombstone. Right. And that is of Jabez, the father, okay. who tragically died just 10 days after the children died. At this moment in time, we don't know the official cause of death. I would surmise that it was the bronchitis that he was suffering with that probably took him. The heartache and the heartbreak of the, of the actual accident that had happened at All Saints Church won't have helped his, um, his condition any either. I'd like to see some um, restoration of this grave. As we can see, it has submerged a little bit. That's uh, obviously a project for, for another day, but the important thing is, is we've found the resting place. They're all here. And yeah. again, as we always say with these videos, somebody watching the video, if it brings the names of this family to their attention for 10 minutes and these people are remembered, then it's all been worthwhile. So let's have a closer look at the inscription. In memory of Charles Edward Lom, aged 13, John William Lom, aged 9. It said 8 in the... Uh, Newspaper reports. And Fred Lum, age six, it said five in the uh, newspaper reports. The above named brothers lost their lives by suffocation. In the heat, heating vaults of All Saints Church, Little Horton. February the 4th, 1871. Also, Jabezlom, father of the above, who died February the 14th. The mother's here as well. I didn't see her. Yeah. Also of did. Martha, Ellen Lum, widow of the above, who died, is that the 5th of June? I can't read that from this angle. Is it 19? 1893, I think. In her 57th year. Rest in peace, all of you. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Thanks very much, Mark, for that. It's very awkward to film and... Uh, yeah. As you can see, I'm just going to pan around. So 
So there we have it, another, another sad chapter in our city's history. Can you imagine the grief of that poor woman losing three children and a husband in the space of 10 days, but they're here, laid to rest, they're all together, the family's all together. We don't know what happened to, there was another three sons, I believe, but again, we'll remember them. May they rest in peace.